Okay, so I'm here in line waiting on Alex to get out of school. And as you may or may not remember, this is my the current book I'm reading. And uh, this is the time when I try to do most of my enjoyable reading. And um, because there's really nothing else to do except to listen to Rush Limbaugh on the radio. <laughs> and sometimes even that gets old. So anyway, I know that'll fire some of you up. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, this really, I'm starting to understand why some of this text, some of this, some of these books are not necessarily in the Bible. It, and I don't know quite how to explain this, but when you read the Bible, you fit, now again, I'm not ultra religious or anything, but I do believe in God, I believe in the Creator, but when I read the Bible, I almost feel like you can almost feel that it's inspired. The person who wrote wrote the text seems to be inspired. When I'm reading some of this, it just seems like uh, footnotes or, I don't know, it seems like afterthoughts or um, I can't, can't quite put my finger on it. So, I don't know, like this, for example, this um, chapter 29 of Acts that was... The theory here is by these people is that, where is it, that the book of, let's see, the book of James and the Acts of the Apostles are the only two New Testament books that that do not end in Amen. In other words, apparently that was a, you know, a pretty typical way to end. So, you know, they're saying that the book of Acts seems to be um, you know, missing something. Gotta fix my battery here. So, anyway, and, uh, you know, this is about, mainly about, uh, Paul's journey to uh, Spain and Britain, supposedly. And really, there's not much to this. It seems like it culminates in, and this is a little suspect of this, um, it culminates where they actually. And, and after he preached and toiled much, Paul and his fellow workers went to Helvetica and came to Mount Pontius Pilate, where he who condemned the Lord Jesus threw himself down headlong and so miserably perished. And immediately a torrent gushed from the mountain and washed his body, which had been broken in pieces into a lake. Um, I'm trying to read this through the viewfinder. <laughs> And Paul stretched forth his hands upon the water and prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, give a sign to all nations, that here Pontius Pilate, which condemned your only begotten son, plunged down headlong into the pit. And uh, while Paul was still speaking, uh, they looked, here came a great earthquake, and the face of the waters was changed, and the lake took form like unto the son of man hanging on the agony in in an agony upon the cross um and it says uh a voice came out of the heavens uh, saying even Pilate has escaped the wrath to come um, so i mean that seems to be the, that seems to be the whole message the the fact that paul went to spain and britain and in the end at the end of the chapter they talk about the fact that Pontius Pilate uh, washed his hands of it. I don't know if the whole point of the, of the 29th chapter was to sort of redeem Pontius Pilate or what. But um, after that it basically says, And they went forth and came into um, this city, <laughs> uh, intending to go by Macedonia into Asia. And uh, grace was found in all of the churches. And they prospered and had peace. Amen. So they finally get their amen. <laughs> but anyway, this, I didn't really mean for this video to be this long. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel that inspired or feel like the... And I did read one other, uh, another one, but that takes a little longer to talk about. So I better end this before my phone memory runs out. But uh, the uh, story, the of Mary Magdalene, which one was it, on the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, so, which was kind of strange too, to me, 
Um, it seems like the whole thing was about the fact that Jesus spoke to her privately and the apostles didn't like it or something. There was a lot of petty stuff in it, which I thought, oh, no wonder this was left out. It wasn't because she was a woman. <laughs> it's because of the pettiness in it. So anyway, that kind of thing where I don't feel like some of this is necessarily should be in the Bible. So I think they probably should have said, you know, lost texts or lost scrolls or but these certainly some of this certainly doesn't qualify I don't think to be in the Bible but of course I'm a Bible scholar but I mean honestly it's kind of cool I'm still interested and I'm still going to read the whole thing and maybe I will report back something different but uh, later on but um, I mean still what to me what is so important about this kind of thing is that the, these scrolls or texts were found and the more writing that is found of that era um, and it's, it's more of a history it's more of a um, documentation of, of historical uh, happenings to me than it is whether these should belong in the Bible or not because the fact that all these texts were found and verified to be of the age um, it's more like historical documents for me than it is uh, necessarily inspirational. So, anyway, just a quick, another quick glance, and I'm continuing to go through it. Thanks, guys.